Next up, web services using Swagger, also known as OpenAVI. There's a branch called Swagger within the Land of Apps fork of the Rails sample app, sixth edition, same repo that I used for app map. You can check out the branch for all the code that I'm going to show in this section. Swagger takes YAML or JSON files and generates a web page, which is an interactive catalog of your web services. The catalog contains routes, methods, status codes, parameters, request body, authentication methods, and more. The Swagger spec is extensive and detailed. Swagger is oriented towards documenting published APIs because it's pretty laborious to write and maintain the files. With auto documentation, it can be worthwhile to document internal APIs too. Writing Swagger files is frankly pretty tough. And there's a challenge of keeping it accurate and up to date. So we can generate Swagger files. So can we generate Swagger files instead of writing them? I'm going to show two ways of doing that, starting with a gem called RSwag. In RSwag, you write tests in a dialect of RSpec, and it generates Swagger JSON or YAML. RSwag is a gem, and it provides a rake task to generate the Swagger files from the data you create in RSpec. Let's take a look at how it works. In the gem file, we'll find the rswag gem. In routes RB, you'll find two rswag engines, UI and API. Because rswag actually serves the Swagger catalog directly from inside your app. This is very handy because it means that the Swagger UI and your app share the same session. So you can swap back and forth between the Swagger UI and your app interacting with both at the same time. So I'll log into the UI. a micro post. OK, and then let's see the Swagger UI. You can see two functions here in, in Swagger. The first one is a route to get micro posts. And um, this is a JSON API style function. The second one is a function to create a micro post. Let's try this function right here in the UI. This is one of the features of the Swagger catalog. So I can execute this, this method, and I get back a JSON list of my micro posts. And since I'm logged in, um, and both of these tools are sharing the same session, I'm authenticated, and I can interact directly with my data. Let's take a look at where that came from. Here's my RSwag tests, MicroPost controller spec. So I'm not using standard RSpec. I'm using these methods like path, get, and response. These essentially mirror Swagger very closely. Here's the Swagger. Paths, route, get, response. Very similar. So if I want to add another route to my Swagger, I can add a new test. I can run that test if I want to. And then I run the rake rswag specs swaggerize command, which will run over my 
my R swag and update the swagger.yaml. So now you can see the logout route here at the bottom. And if I go back to my swagger UI, refresh, now I have the logout route. So if I do that, as you might expect, I'm logged out of I'm logged out of the app. So from a developer standpoint, updated Swagger should be committed by us when we make a web services change, similar to schema migrations or structure.sql. And then it can be diffed and reviewed in a pull request using standard source diff um, and other procedures. So this provides a powerful way to track and review changes to application web services. Let's talk about some pluses and minuses with our swag. On the plus side, the swagger is auto-generated from test cases, so it's, it's accurate. Our swag also ensures that the swagger file is valid because it does assertion checks when it actually runs the tests. You run, you run those tests as our specs and they are validated and that gives you assurance that your swagger is, is correct. And our swag is also very customizable. Most, if not all the features in OpenAPI are also features of our swag. So if you know that format really well, you can, you can um, put a lot of detailed information into your Swagger files. On the minus side, you may have a lot of specs already that aren't written using our Swag flavored R spec. And to use our Swag, you have to port or rewrite those over in the R Swag um, flavor. And you also need to learn a lot about the Open API format because essentially the R Swag format is the Open API format. So you don't get a lot of um, you don't get a lot for free there. You really have to know what what to put in. So I'm also going to talk about another option for Swagger, which is called App Map Swagger, and this is brand new code that I just wrote for this presentation. So if you go if you go try it, and I hope you do, um, just remember that it's young code, and what it does is it generates Swagger from App Map files which are pre-recorded from test cases. So in order to generate Swagger with App Map Swagger, you install an NPM package, a node package, and then add an App Map Swagger rake test, rake task. And you can see that you can see that in the sample app for an example on the Swagger branch. And you can generate Swagger using rake app map swagger. Let's take a look at, the, at a demo of that. So I've shut down the server. I'm going to go over to the configuration R swag UI. So I'm switching my, my source of uh, Swagger authority, if you will, from this directory, Swagger RSpec, over to this directory, Swagger App Map. And let's try fake App Map Swagger. What this is going to do is it's going to crawl over all these App Map files, the same as what you saw before. And each of these files contains data from a particular test case, including examples of, work, of web service calls. So App Map Swagger finds all the web service calls that are in the App Map files, combines it all together, and converts that information over into Swagger Dump. And it looks like this. Similar to what we saw from our Swag, except more of it. So this was all completely discovered from within my within my app maps. And if I go refresh the UI, I'll see this very extensive list of, of routes. 
And all this came from test cases that I already had because uh, the real sample app, as you can see here, has good amount of tests. So our map Swagger also makes it easy to add a little bit of uh, parameter type information. So for example, I can go in here and these fields are already created for me. And I'll put in my username and password, execute that. And then when I go over here to the app, I'm logged in. Similar to what we saw with, with our swag. So pluses and minuses of uh, Map Swagger. On the plus side, it uses your existing test cases, request functional controller and integration tests. Anything that, that hits a controller or hits a web service route will be, will be discovered and incorporated into Swagger. Since it's generated, it ensures, it ensures that the, the Swagger file is valid and it matches whatever your code does because it is literally made from your code. So it's accurate as far as the code behavior. Um, and you can get more complete API coverage faster because it leverages the test cases that you've got. You also don't need to learn very much about the open API format. Um, I didn't have to, I didn't actually show you any open API there that was handwritten by me. There was a little bit there to do the, the uh, login format. But for the most part, you just get to use the open API tools instead of having to learn all the guts of how they work, which I like. On the minus side, it's less customizable than our swag or writing your own swagger because it's generated from um, using a code generator. So there's fewer options for configuration there. So in summary on swagger, you can see your whole web services catalog and interact actively with your API. Swagger also has some other functions like generating client code. You can debug your web services in a very granular way. You can observe your test coverage uh, visually. You can see what's covered and what isn't reflected back to you in Swagger. And you can diff your web services changes by committing your Swagger YAML and then going through the standard review process.